Hello and welcome to Legion's Imperialist Math Hammer Air Support Edition. In this video I wanted to cover some of the math behind the flyer units in the game because these uh, air support have had a lot of traction on Discord and with other YouTubers and things like that. Uh, hyping them up and, and talking about how some of them are overpowered and, and they're not all equal and things like that. I wanted to support this with some of the math behind the game which can be found in the spreadsheet, which is linked below. As always, this presentation includes images, but those are copyright games workshop. I'm using them under fair use doctrine. Don't sue me, GW. Um, this is just a commentary. I'm not making any money off of this. And uh, this is just a passion project. Before we get into the actual stats on the flyers, we have to look at some of the actual traits and things that affect them in game. First off is going to be the Skyfire. In order to hit flyers, you have to hit them on a six unless you have Skyfire. So with a lot of the better weapons that would normally be used, that reduces their effectiveness down to about 33%. Or in the case of the Turbo Laser Destructor here, 40% because it does get to roll misses. So it offsets that a little bit. So let's just take the Hellstrike missiles. They would be good at a ranged offensive rating of 11. However, without Skyfire, it drops to 3.68. Additionally, the light AT trait also affects flyers because right now they're all considered vehicles. Since they're vehicles, light AT reduces the AP down to zero. And so there are additional weapons like the Avenger Auto Cannon, the Avenger Bolt Cannon, things like that, that don't actually get to keep their AP versus those flyers. So here we go. Uh, the Avenger Auto Cannon ends up being two thirds effective. Same with the Bolt Cannon, same with the Nose Mounted Auto Cannon. These things are about a, a third less effective. So if you compound that with the additional 33% from the other one, you, you have a good tankiness just by being a flyer if you're in the flying mode. The thing now to look at is what weapons are good that can satisfy those two conditions or have enough dice pool or AP to negate some of those negatives. Of note, there are no knights or titans on this list. They are kind of too hard to evaluate at this point. What I would recommend, or what I plan on doing, is using whichever knights and titans um, I find interesting. And if you want to get into a dedicated role, maybe just find some of these weapons that are on those and use those instead. So I'll be looking at the vehicles, infantry, and, and walkers, and stuff like that, tanks other aircraft. By far the best weapon in the game against flyers is going to be the Sky Strike missiles. They have both the anti-tank and the Sky Fire rating, so they're up there at about almost a 15 offensive rating. Uh, based on the math, if you want to go through all that, you can go look at my other video. They also have the 30-inch range, which is rather substantial. Um, Right next to that is the Daredeo Dreadnought, which is going to have the Iolus Missile Launcher. Um, Xiphons aren't nearly as effective as you might think. Avengers, um, same. And then you have the other Xiphon weapon. But it drops down drastically beyond that. Like just, just in the top, what, eight here? That, that's a difference of the bottom one is a third as effective as the Sky Strike missiles. So these are going to be kind of the weapons that we're looking for when we're saying, hey, I want to have something in my formation that's going to be able to deal with these flyers because I think they're going to be there quite a bit. Interceptors are another way to deal with flyers. And for Legions of Stardis, there's the Xiphon. And for a Solar Auxiliary, you get the Avenger, the Lightning, and the Thunderbolt. And all of these come with the ability to shoot one of their weapons as an interceptor weapon during the movement phase. So let's take a look at some of the math on those interceptor weapons because there is an extra little deficit that occurs during them. The benefit, the major benefit is it's a second shot with the weapon, but it occurs earlier during the movement phase. So you can actually get the jump on somebody else when you're using any of those four. The deficit is that you have a minus two to all hit rolls when doing so. What this means is a lot of your weapons are going to end up at six or even seven, but you still hit on a six, to your hit. So the effectiveness of those weapons reduces drastically. 
So I went ahead and made extra lines for each of the interceptor weapons, and I have published them here. So your Avenger Bolt Cannon, uh, LAS Cannons, Hellstrike Missiles, Skystrike Missiles, uh, both Xiphon weapons are both here. And the higher the range defensive rating, the better it is. So th there's a couple standouts here. The Avenger Bolt Cannon, when used as an interceptor. Now this is really nice because it averages more than half a wound, which is the best. But if you think about it, that's actually not a whole lot. Um, even if you're hitting that wound, you might not actually kill the model if it's like, it has two wounds, like a Thunderhawk or something along those lines. And, and you're still not even guaranteed. So you're going to have to bring typically two to math an average of killing one thing uh, if it has one hit point. So that's a really good takeaway from this, is if you're using units, you want your quantity to get to an average wound of at least one in your interceptor squadron in order to have an effect on the battlefield before the firing phase comes. So, for example, two units with an Avenger Bolt Cannon, or maybe two with the Quad Auto Cannons. If you're going to get down to the Xiphons, I, I actually feel that three Xiphons is the way to go, because then you're getting up to, like, over 90% chance that you will actually get one wound through. And if you're getting that one wound through on something like a, uh, a Thunderbolt, you're reducing their damage drastically. So you can kind of use this information not just for, hey, what's mathematically the best, but, but getting those dice averages to what you want. Notably, a lot of the weapons, like the Avenger Laz Cannon and things like that, you're, you're getting down into just 20% chance of wounding somebody in with an interceptor, it's not nearly as drastic as you might think. Like, oh, okay, I get those extra shots, but but the effectiveness is a lot lower. So I wanted to take a look at some of the actual specific air support units within each of the uh, Legions of Astartes and Solar Auxiliary. Starting with the Astartes, there's the Fire Raptor, the Storm Eagle, the Thunderhawk, and then the Xiphon. Xiphon is the only interceptor version out of that, so we kind of have to take that into account. Astartes is a lot easier because we can stick all of those into one little snapshot. Whereas with the Solar Exilia, there are so many different options on those. So there's only three variants of the Fire Raptor. The Storm Eagle, Thunderhawk, and the Xiphon do not have variants. In Interestingly enough, the, the Storm Eagle here is kind of the first standout because it, it is not effective at all at doing anything. It is, uh, has the worst points per firepower per wound at over four, but it does have that transport capability, so you kind of have to weigh that in there. But I, I personally don't think that transport is worth that much. The Thunderhawk here comes out because of the two wounds at under two firepower or points per firepower, which makes it on par with the auxiliary units we'll see later. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's good. so much better than the Astartes, but uh, the math actually disagrees with that once you take into account the extra wounds, the, the full firepower, the, the range of their weapons. Um, so let's come back to that one and be like, why does it math out to be the same? It's not just the wounds, interestingly enough, as we'll see later. The Xiphon averages about 1.81 wounds against flyers during the advanced fire phase. But the range is only 22 inches on those shots. So you need to have more activations than your opponent to be able to target their flyers. You're going to want to try to get their flyers out there sooner and then react to them. Also of note, the Xiphon has a better save than the auxiliary flyers. And the other benefit that Astartes has is if you are White Scars, you have that better Jink save that you can use as an alternative to your armor save. So there's a few different things here that you can kind of take away from this information. And, and they're all about in the same range. I, I don't feel like there's anything that stands out uh, drastically other than Thunderhawk in this category, especially because it is a heavy assault transport. You're going to have those things on it if you want. So, again, the Fire Raptor with the Gravis Cannon actually has 
the best way to deal with infantry of anything on here. So if you want that that ability to fly across the battlefield and slaughter their infantry, which might be on a back objective, you might consider that Fire Raptor. The uh, Fire Raptor with the last cannon is actually pretty versatile against both tanks and flyers. However, it does suffer from the fact that it is a lot more expensive. It's um, fragile compared to its points. The Storm Eagle, unfortunately, it's not good. There is no nothing about it screams efficiency, but it's cool. You, you got to give that credit for that. The Thunderhawk is good. It has, uh, especially because of that second wound, the transport on it, its weapons load out. It, it can fire at multiple different targets. It's, it's pretty versatile in and of itself. It's got a good save, things like that. The Xiphon is expensive, but actually it is very good at what it does. And again, I'll cover what I think you can do to make sure that the Xiphon is performing as well as some of those auxiliary vehicles. Moving on to Auxilia, there's the Arvis Lighter, which I have here. It is a transport. I'm not going to include it in any of the calculations because, frankly, it doesn't have any weapons. It does suffer from the fact that it is a flyer. So unless it's in hover and dies, you end up losing your infantry because you're not going to have any jetpacks and stuff like that. The Avenger, the Lightning, uh, those are two of the interceptors. And then there's the Marauder Bomber variants and the Th which is also the other interceptor. Because each of these has drastically different loadouts, I have included them on separate pages here. So the Avenger does have six different ways you can build it. And here, if you recall, the Sky Strike option is the best anti-air in the game. So either of the two loadouts, either the Last Cannon or the Auto Cannon, with the Sky Strike can perform quite well. It's uh, points per firepower per wound. Actually dips below that 2.0 value, just like that Thunderhawk you saw earlier. It has great offensive percent potential with that. Um, notably, the Hellstrike and the Sky Strike are safe because they both have a 30-inch range. So you can sit back and have not much counterplay when using these units. The Hellstrike is going to be your anti-armor option. If you are needing something to be dedicated to the anti-armor, maybe you've got a couple flyers, you can consider that as an option for the Avenger. It deals with them just fine. The Lightning, uh, unfortunately, suffers from an inefficiency in a lot of the points. Again, it is safe at 30 inches with the Hellstrike uh, Skyfires. However, the Phosphex one is not safe. So you're kind of not leveraging your advantages by taking the Phosphex bombs. And uh, unfortunately, they are just not efficient for their firepower. Maybe I'll come back to that and evaluate it when it works on buildings and, and things like that. Also, these points per firepower per wound are drastically higher than some of the other options that that we saw in the Avenger, and actually it is also higher than the Thunder. Uh, but, interesting, still better than the Xiphon from the uh, Astartes faction for offensive capability, but not defensive. <laughs> Ignore these two, that looks like those are left over from the previous. Alright, moving on to the Marauder. There are numerous different variants of the Marauder, Colossus, Destroyer, Pathfinder, and the Bomber. Uh, the Pathfinder is a little weird. It's got the uh, Augur ability. We're going to ignore that one for right now. And just keep in mind that uh, these have the Hellstrike, Skystrike takeaways. Uh, again, the Wing Bombs are going to be pretty good. The Marauder has a better save than, some of the, than any of the Interceptors from the Auxilia faction. Um, but what really shines here is the fact that the firepower per wound goes down to almost one. So these are actually twice as effective as those interceptors. The, the trick is they're not as safe because you have to get close up with that. Also, not all of that firepower is concentrated. The Marauder, especially with like the Hellstrike missiles, 
you cannot get optimally efficient shots. You're going to have to split your fire. You've got some short range guns. You're going to have to point defense. So that number actually kind of lies to you a little bit. It is very deceiving because it is unlikely that you'll get that much firepower out of it, even though uh, there are some deficits taken into account in the calculations of uh, multiple weapon systems where you're trying to shoot at different things. Of note, I really think the Colossus Bomb has potential because it is only a one-time use. It is very effective at what it does, and the fact that you only use it once means maybe you use it on something like a front line, or it's got the bombing, so it occurs in a really good phase. And so get that initial alpha strike off from that Colossus Bomb, and then you don't have to worry about the Marauder having lost its combat effectiveness because it's already had that big impact already because in this case the Colossus Bomb in the calculation only has one-fifth effectiveness because you're not going to be able to use it in the future. So get that Alpha Strike up front. Uh, I really think the Marauder Colossus is probably your best bet as far as uh, the Marauder variants. Um, maybe with the Sky Strikes or Hell Strikes or or additional bombs if you want to affect ground targets. Okay, uh, the Thunderbolt is the last of the uh, interceptors from the Solar Auxilia. And again, we have some of the same things with the event. You're getting that dipping right under below two firepower per wound value. Um, the Hell Strikes are good for anti armor, Sky Strikes for anti air, um, wing bombs if you want to get that ground combat. Maybe you expect people to be forward deploying or even uh, infiltrating, deep striking onto you, things like that. That's where I think the wing bombs are going to be your best bet. Otherwise, there's nothing new here that's not in the Avenger. It's kind of unfortunate. These two are so similar with their loadouts that there's not really much of a mathematical difference between taking the two. Okay, final takeaways from looking at all of the detachments from either of the factions. The Astartes have a better save and rely on dice saves and jink to get their value. So what I mean by this is if because they are not as mathematically efficient, but they have those better defensive capabilities, in order to make up their value, you're going to have to put them in harm's way. You have to rely on those defensive dice in order to get the effectiveness that you want. This can be good because the rest of your army might not be getting shot as much. And getting that uh, tankiness or maybe use one as a distraction card effect, something like that, is probably going to be your best way to use those. Additionally, you can improve some of the saveness with the White Scar's Jink ability, where it increases to four. And that might give you a little bit more survivability on those very expensive uh, planes, especially the Siphon, if you're going to be using it in a dogfight where you're fighting against some of those other interceptors. The Thunderheart actually is on par with the Auxilia Flyers. It is extremely durable because it does have that extra save. Again, you can double down on that with the White Scar Jink if you want, and different things like that. You've got the transport capability. It's a nice uh, end-all, be-all, kind of do-all kind of thing, where you've got that big, versatile platform of guns. Unfortunately, it suffers a lot from the Marauder effect, where you're probably not shooting all of your weapons at the same targets. So you're going to be sky striking one, you're going to point defense another, and then the rest of your loadout's going somewhere else. As for the Solar Auxilia, you kind of want to take a gunline perspective on this. Bring your interceptors on, not too far, get them in safe positions where they're not going to be shot at from like point defense, or um, they're not going to overwatch them, things like that. The Avenger and the Thunderbolt interceptors, these are probably the best anti-air in the game uh, if you are sticking the Skyscrape missiles on them. Uh, nothing else compares to that, and it's definitely something you're probably going to see a lot. And when I say a lot, a lot, a lot. And 
this is the reason people on YouTube and Discord are talking about how the auxiliary are so much better than Astartes in air, even though I partially disagree. I don't think they're nearly as twice as good as, as maybe others have claimed. And lastly, the Marauders, they are good. Uh, they do pack a big punch. Much uh, They're punching above their point weight for sure. However, they, they are um, not quite as durable as some of the Astartes counterparts, but their damage is going to be well worth it. You're going to see these, especially if they are backed up by interceptors quite a bit. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day. If you have any questions or comments, uh, you can see the change log in the spreadsheet that is below. I hope to come up with more of these videos. It's been kind of fun. I know there's a couple of mistakes in this one. No big deal. Um, we'll just uh, go get along with it. All right, adieu.